Good morning and welcome to day 12 of the Mindfulness Challenge. Uh, we started this now 12 days ago um, and it's it's been an interesting period for all of us, I think. Um, and there's been many ups and downs and a lot of that has been down to the fact of you know, the ever-changing, very fluid, dynamic environment that we're currently living in. Um, for me personally, um, the virus has been in the house. Um, and I think hopefully touch wood now, I feel good again today. Yesterday I dipped big time about seven, eight o'clock last night. I just, boom, just fell off a cliff. And um, I have woke up this morning feeling a lot better. I had an early night, slept well, um, got up this morning, had my um, honey, lemon and green tea. And it's weird because one of the things that I've lost over the last four or five days is the sense of smell. Now, I'm a little bit of a traditionalist, so, you know, I go for, um, it's probably not going to be able to go in camera, is it? Yeah. Uh, just if I can zoom in on that, two sex by the wonders of modern technology. It's um, it's a sandalwood cologne. It's an old traditional London barber's um, aftershave, and I just like it. It just smells nice in the morning. And I haven't been able to smell it for ages, and today I could smell it. You know, I burn... Um, I, I am a bit of a sandalwood, isn't I? I burn my uh, joysticks. I can smell them this morning. You know, it's it's beautiful. I I burn um. I burn my joysticks and uh, and their sandalwood as well, which is lovely. And um, I can smell. I can I can sense things. I can taste the lemon in my tea today, which is wonderful. And. Uh, I woke up this morning and thought, well, what am I going to talk about today? You know, it's difficult to keep talking for 14 days. Um, but mindfulness is a, such a great, great subject. And there are many definitions and many things. And one definition I heard recently is, is mindfulness, and how do you want to describe it? And mindfulness is the ability to know what's happening in your head at any given moment, but not to get carried away with it. Not to... Um, realize our thoughts are real but they're not true and, and our emotions and all of these things and we talk about it quite a bit extensively every single day but that's okay until you do get some fear or anxiety or stress or emotion that just bubbles up underneath you think where's that coming from and the reason for that really is what I want to talk about is mindfulness is about balance it's about balancing you know your life and everything you're going to do in it mindfulness isn't a magic wand that's going to ensure that every day is is beautiful rainbows beautiful sunshine again today pouring in through my my window but you know it's not rainbows it's not unicorns it's not dancing stars and all of these sort of things but it is a way of us being able to any one given time be aware of our mind and our thoughts but not make them our master and i believe that where we are at the moment in terms of um awakening and the world is awakening, and we'll go into that a little bit deeper later. But, um, you know, it's going to be so important. You know, um, if you think about the 19, coming up the Second World War, the 1940s, and all those sort of things, if you'd have said to somebody, um, what have you been doing today? And oh, I've been out running. And the first thing they'd ask you is, who was chasing you? And, 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 it's, and it's, I think mindfulness is going to be, you know, the next running Lots of people go out and run and they feel guilty if they don't run and keeps them happy and healthy and all of these things. So I think we're going to move forward um, with mindfulness and I think it's going to become um, the new running. And it won't, as I said before, it's not a magic wand for everybody. And it, you know, it, it won't cure all of our things. It saved, it did save my life when my dad passed. I'll be honest with you, I don't know where I would be. Um, but I see it as a personal superpower. I see it as a superpower to overcome the thoughts that are happening in my head at any given moment to become aware of them. It's that level of awareness. And one of those thoughts at the moment, really, and one of those things, really, that is growing. And remember what we said, where we practice, what we grow. So if we're sat down all day worrying and building fear of what's happening around us, the fear of isolation, the fear of catching the virus, the fear of losing a loved one, all of these things, these fears, and, and they're there, but how do we handle them? What is a mindful way of doing it? And, and we're, we're experiencing just not, just not the fear of, of the virus, but we're also experiencing the fear of the financial side of things, where businesses are closing down, 
but also there's business and busyness. The busyness is slowing. The busyness of life is slowing. You know, um, um, cities are emptying. People, things are changing. The noise is is a lot less in the world, and 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 it feels like the world now is 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 just completely slowing down. And we've, if you'd like, if we've we've moved into this um, uh, enforced stillness, um, and what we're experiencing now is is an awakening. You know, people are sitting still now for the first time in generations and going, oh, I never really thought about that. Hmm. Spending time with their family, listening, connecting to themselves. And that awareness, um, if you're watching now, you've already started that process. Your process may have started um, many moons ago, but it's though that awareness and the ability to, to see thoughts in our minds and to recognize them with awareness. Awareness of your thoughts, be aware of us having some useless thoughts, fears and emotions, they're not serving us. Um, they're based on um, on what's happening around us and the recognition that this may happen to us, which makes us very fearful. Fear of, as I said, fear of losing a family member, money, investments, um, fear of, of getting sick. So we have these fears for ourselves and for others, but they're not happening right at the moment to most of us anyway. Um, but our mind is saying it could happen. So I better think about it now. If it did happen, and if it does happen, then you get the virus like we have, we've had a mild version, touch wood, God bless, blah, blah, blah. then you deal with it. You face it, you look at it and you say, accept it and you're aware of it and you let it take its course and you do the things that you're supposed to do to be able to you know, overcome it, build your immune system, isolate, da 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 da. But, you know, and when it does happen, we can face the situation with the power of presence. You know, I'll be honest with you, there's been times when I've been sat in the house and I felt really ill. And I can hear my wife upstairs coughing and my daughter. And I'm thinking, where does this start and where does this stop? And then I think to myself, just be in the moment, be in the presence. Everything will pass. Do keep doing the right thing and the right things will happen. But just sit with that energy. Become aware of it. And I'll show you a technique in a moment. We're going to do the body scan again today, which I'll cut in. Um, I think it's important to reconnect with our bodies. And there's a reason for that. Is, you know, we can't always fix all of the problems that happen in our thoughts. In fact, the more we think about some of these issues and fears, the more they amplify, the more they get a, get a grip of you. So if we can become aware of what we're doing to ourselves, it's not that we're volunt voluntarily, you know, putting ourselves under fear and and stress and anxiety, but with thoughts without an absence of awareness, that can really send you into this spiral, and that spiral in your mind becomes reality, and then you become the mercy of your thoughts. The thought that lives in us, and at that moment we realise we're not our thoughts. We become aware of the process of thoughts and then we can truly move forward. Why do we make ourselves suffer? Why do we do it? It's not you, it's your subconscious mind, subconscious mind. It's the fight or flight. It's the swirling of the environment and the mind around you. We think bad things could happen. But when we're aware that these are just thoughts and not the reality, that's where we have the freedom. We have an awareness of fear and we're aware that these are just thoughts. We have a way out, we have a choice. We can, um, we can keep with the thoughts, which are not gonna serve us any purpose whatsoever, or we can come away from them and realize that the worry and the fear controlling your life is just a, a, a delusion. It's, it's there because your mind is just thinking, but that's not actually what's happening. That's not the reality. The more you think about the problems in your life and you know, the more you think the world's going to collapse and everything's wrong. The worry and fear never wants to end. It, it, it just wants to keep going. 
We can't fight with it. If we fight with that fear and we fight with our thoughts, it makes it stronger. It's also not about the willpower. It's about recognising the thoughts and the destructive nature and see that a lot of unhappiness in our narrative from our mind, at that moment, you have a choice. You can continue to be dragged by fear or you can say, my choice is to take attention, pay attention away from that feeling, away from that thinking. The fear wants you to think and use your thoughts. It wants you to work with your thought space. So what you need to do, and we're going to do something here now, is bring your attention to somewhere else. Feel your breath. Direct your attention to your inner body. And in fact, one of the things that, um, to be fair, you know, there's lots of teachers out there and, and, and I look at these things, but I'm, I'm a spiritual healer. So I believe in spirituality, which is mindfulness and connection and those things. I also believe in a belief system called spiritualism, which is the ability to connect and work with spirit. So I'm somebody who's very much about energy. And I and and my psychic awareness, my intuition, my I can read and work and sit with people and feel their energy. But what I want you to do is is <clears throat> is I just want you to take your left hand, okay, and I just want you to just look at it. And then I want you to breathe into it. What do you feel? What can you sense? Just focus on breathing into your hand. Now I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to ask yourself now with your left hand, is it still there? Can you feel it? Can you feel the energy that's around your hand? Now, some of that energy is very subtle. So I want you just to be very alert about the energy and the breathing in and out of your hand. Now, I want you to put your other hand up now with your eyes closed. And I just want you to feel the sensation of both of your hands. And I want you just to breathe in and out and breathe through your hands. And feel the beautiful aliveness and the energy within your hands. And as you find your own natural rhythm, you're just breathing in and breathing out. And it's a wonderful feeling to know that now you are really connected with your hands and you're aware of the breathing and there's this beautiful aliveness of your mind and your body actively being subsided because of the awareness and attention you're paying on your hands. I just want you to sit there for a moment now and just just hold your hands up so it's comfortable but just bring your awareness there, bring your alertness and just breathe through your hands. You may feel some heat in the middle of your palms, you may, you may just want to move them slightly, you want to move the energy around, you might bring them together, you might want to Move them slightly apart. Whatever you're doing, just bring your attention to your hands and the beautiful energy that is around them. Just follow your own natural breathing rhythm and focus on your breath. Breathing in, feeling it, breathing out. You can just face, you can just feel this real sense of calmness as well now. You can feel your body just coming down a few octaves, just slowly, subtly coming into this beautiful calmness as you focus on breathing and bringing the attention to your hands. Feeling the energy building. It can be subtle or it can be quite powerful. But you're just in that moment with your hands, checking in, breathing, slowly, rhythmically in and out. And, you know, just open your eyes and just rub your hands together. Get that feeling of your hands again. So 
we're going to go into the body scan now, but one of the things that we know is when we connect with our inner body, we cannot sustain the stream of thinking that creates fear, emotion, panic, any other anxiety or any of those other things. So when we feel as if our mind is racing with fear, if we're sat there thinking, am I going to catch this illness? Are my loved ones going to die? How am I financial? And we just get into that spiral. I just want you to take a deep breath and just close your eyes and just bring your hands up. Just feel your hands, focus on, on your hands. Now you can do that for five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 seconds, it doesn't matter. But what that will do, it will stem the thoughts. You bring this awareness and then you realise they are just thoughts. And we all know that if we play the long game, we'll be through this anyway. Financially, health, wisdom, everything that goes with it. So I'm going to pop the body scan up now, which is an opportunity for you to look at and connect with your whole body. And then we'll be back to have a chat at the end. Thanks very much. Enjoy the body scan. Now the body scan is very much, we're going to go right the way through the body, we're going to open it all up, and we're going to see what emotions come out. Okay, and then, you know, you can send me comments or whatever it is if you want to tell me what happened to you or whatever the scenario is. So, again, what I want you to do is get into this, you know, very comfortable position, all right? I want you to be comfortable and not too relaxed. Uh, this meditation, all meditations, are about falling awake, not falling asleep. Okay, so it's comfortable rather than relaxed. All right, so get into that comfortable position. All right, I want you to close your eyes. Okay, I want you to close your eyes <clears throat> and I want you just to follow my breath. Follow my voice, sorry. Okay, just follow my voice. Again, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to be aware of your breath. So the mindfulness meditation that we've done just a few moments ago, I want you to do it again. So sit in the posture. Breathe and feel the point of your breath and then just breathe. Out. Breathe in. And breathe out. And as I've said before, if you have any thoughts that come into your mind, acknowledge them, breathe them in, acknowledge them, hold them, accept them, and then breathe them out. Breathe them away. Okay? So you're sat now and you're going to focus on your breath. Breathing in and breathing out at that point of contact where your breath, you feel it. It's on your shirt or whatever it is. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. Now what I want you to do is I want you to find your own natural rhythm. Okay, your own natural breathing rhythm. All right. And I want you to be now comfortable and warm and you can sit in this position. But your eyes now have closed gently. And I want you to take a few moments Again, just to get in touch with the movement of your breath and the sensations in your body. Just sit and follow my breath, follow my voice. You're breathing in and you're breathing out. Now, as I said, you may be feeling some sensations in your body. When you're ready, bring your awareness to the physical sensations in your body especially the sensations of touch or pressure if you like where your body makes contact with the chair or the bed wherever you are on each out breath i want you to let yourself go so you can feel when you're sat in the chair or you're laying on the bed you feel those points of contact you're breathing in you're breathing out on every out breath, as I said, I want yourself to go. I want you to sink a little deeper into the chair. I want you to sink a little deeper into the bed if you are. Remind yourself of the intention of this practice. The intention is to let all of your stress, your emotions, your fears to go. It's a name not to feel any different, relaxed or calm. This may happen or it may not. But instead, the intention of this practice, as best you can, is to bring the awareness to any sensations you detect as we focus on each part of the body. 
Now bring your attentions to the physical sensations in the lower abdomen. Becoming aware of any changing patterns or sensations in the abdomen, in your stomach wall. And as you breathe in, and as you breathe out. Take a few moments to feel the sensations as you breathe in and you breathe out. Having connected with the sensations in your stomach and the abdomen, bring your focus or spotlight of your awareness down the left leg. So slowly your focus and awareness is going through the top of your thigh, through your knee, through your calf, into the left foot and out of your toes on the left foot. I want you to focus now on your breath on each one of these toes in the left foot in turn. Bring in a gentle curiosity to investigate the quality of the sensations you find. Perhaps noticing the sense of contact between the toes, a sense of tingling, warmth or no particular sensation. When you're ready, on an in-breath, feel or imagine the breath entering the lungs, passing down the abdomen, into the left leg, left foot, and out to the toes of the left feet. Then, on the out-breath, feel or imagine the breath coming all the way back up, out to the foot, into the leg, up through the abdomen, in through the chest, and out through the nose. As best you can, Continue this for a few breaths. Breathing down into the toes and back out of the toes. It may be difficult to get the hang of this practice. This is just breathing into things as best you can. Approaching it in a right way. Now when you're ready and out breath, let go of the awareness of the toes and bring your awareness to the sensations on the bottom of your left foot. Bring in a gentle, investigative awareness to the sole of the foot, the instep, the heel. And notice in the sensations where the heel makes contact with the floor or the bed. Experiment with breathing with the sensation. Being aware of the breath in the background as in the foreground you explore the sensations of your lower foot. Breathing in and breathing out. Now allow the awareness to expand into the rest of the foot, to the ankle, to the top of the foot, and right into the bones and joints. Then taking a slightly deeper breath, directing it down into the whole of the left foot. And as the breath lets go out on the out breath, let go of the left foot completely allowing the focus of awareness to move into the lower left leg, the calf, the shin, the knee, and so on in turn. Continue to bring awareness and a gentle curiosity to the physical sensations in each part of the rest of the body in turn. To the upper left leg, to the right toes, to the right foot, to the right leg, to the pelvic area. Into the back. Breathe in through the abdomen. Make a point of contact to your chest and your fingers, your hands and your arms, your shoulders, your neck, your head and your face. And in each area as best you can, bring the same detailed level of awareness and gentle curiosity to the bodily sensations they present. Breathe in and breathe out through your fingers, through your hands, through your arms, through your shoulders. And when you become aware of any tension or other intense sensations in particular part of the body, you can breathe in. Acknowledge that emotion in turn, hold it, breathe out and let it go. Using the, using the in-breath gently to bring awareness into these sensations, and as best you can, have a sense of letting them go or releasing them on the out-breath. So as you work yourself all over your body, 
If you feel any emotions, any feelings, breathe them in, accept them and breathe them out. Your mind will inevitably wander away from the breath and from the body from time to time. That is entirely normal. It's what your minds do. When you notice it, generally acknowledge it, noticing where the mind has gone off to, and then gently return your attention to the part of the body you intend to focus on. You breathe in, and you breathe out. So take that time now to go through all parts of your body. On your right leg, right thigh, right knee, right down through the calf, through the foot, through the sole, and through the feet, through the toes. And now you're connected with your right leg. I just want you to breathe in and see if any sensations or emotions or anything comes to the surface. If it does, we're going to breathe it in, we're going to acknowledge it, and we're going to breathe it out. We're going to let it go. And as we let it go, we let go of all of our energy that we don't need, any negative stress, anything in those parts of the body, we're going to let go. And you need to scan the whole of your body. And after you scan the whole body in this way, spend a few moments being aware of the sensation of the body as a whole and of the breath freely flowing in and out of the body. If you find yourself becoming too relaxed and falling asleep, you might find it helpful just to prop your head up with a pillow. You may also want to do it with opening your eyes, practice sitting up rather than laying down. And you could adjust the time spent in this practice by using larger chunks of your body to become aware of spending a short or longer time with each part. The body scan is about you going through each part of your body, breathing in, finding any emotions, anything, and breathing out. Breathe it in and breathe it out. Okay, so that's um that's a practice that we use the body scan in it. The body scan is is really important because it allows you, as I said before, for you to be able to connect into your body and, and build your awareness and alertness of that and and that coupled with things like the loving kindness meditation and being able to understand and recognize and be alert and aware of thoughts that you're not your thoughts and your emotions and your fears being able to sit with them and when we feel these things really we have a choice we have a choice we can either keep fueling these thoughts this anxiety and this fear or we can come away from it and just bring our awareness to our hands I hope that makes sense. I hope um, and pray that everything's going on. You may have seen yesterday, um, it was a weird day. I didn't feel right, but I launched my book, From a Burden to a Blessing. Um, and that book really is my spiritual life about from the age of five right the way up until last week um, about everything that's going on in my life and the world, but also getting people to understand that sometimes not being normal is normal and, and getting people to understand through my journey that they can they can understand their journey. So I'm hoping bits from mine, they'll say, oh, yeah, I remember that happened to me. And, and there's those moments of being able to contextualize um, your life and your spiritual awakening in a way that somebody else has been there. We can share that empathy. We can share that compassion together. It's available on Amazon. Just uh, Google from a burden to a blessing. The paperback copy will be out pretty soon. It's on Kindle at the moment. So um, if you want to go and buy it, that'd be great. It's eight ninety nine, and um, all the proceeds, all the... Um, all well, the profits going to our well centre where we're building a spiritual college for people to come to South Wales and be able to do this mindfulness challenge um, in a nice, beautiful, um, ancient woodland in Wales. So, fingers crossed. Just remember today, did you put your hand on your chest and say, good morning, Julian, I love you. Good morning, Julian, I love you. Stay safe, keep smiling, 
and I'll see you in around about 24 hours time. God bless. Be love and give love. Take care. Thank you for watching and your support. Please drop some comments in. Tell me how you're getting on. Also share it. Let's try and get this out. Subscribe to the channel and let's try and help others to help themselves live a happy, healthy, balanced spiritual life with clarity and purpose. Have a lovely day. Take care. Bye-bye.